I mean, if you really reach out, you're really in touch with the other person, well, that really is something to strive for, I think. I really do. Yeah, it's just so pathetic if one doesn't do that. Of course, there's a problem, because the closer you come, I think, to another human being, the more completely mysterious and unreachable that person becomes. I mean, you know, you have to reach out. You have to go back and forth with them, and you have to relate, and yet you're relating to a ghost or something. I don't know, because we're ghosts. We're phantoms. Who are we? And that's to face, to confront the fact that you're completely alone, and to accept that you're alone is to accept death. You mean because somehow when you are alone, you're alone with death. I mean, nothing's obstructing your view of it or something like that. Right. You know, if I understood it correctly, I think uh, Heidegger said that uh, if you were to experience your own being to the full, you'd be experiencing the decay of that being toward death as a part of your experience. You know, in the sexual act, there's that moment of complete forgetting, which is so incredible. Then in the next moment, you start to think about things, work on the play, what you've got to do tomorrow. I don't know if this is true of you, but I think it must be quite common. The world comes in quite fast. Now, that again may be because we're afraid to stay in that place of forgetting, because that again is close to death, like people who are afraid to go to sleep. In other words, you interrelate, and you don't know what the next moment will bring, and to not know what the next moment will bring brings you closer to a perception of death. You see, that's why I think that people have affairs. I mean, you know, in the theater, if you get good reviews, uh, you feel for a moment that you've got your hands on something. You know what I mean? I mean, it's a good feeling. But then that feeling goes quite quickly. And once again, you don't know quite what you should do next. What'll happen? Well, have an affair, and up to a certain point, you can really feel that you're on firm ground. You know, there's a sexual conquest to be made. There are different questions. <laughs> Does she enjoy the ears being nibbled? How intensely can you talk about Schopenhauer at some elegant French restaurant? Whatever nonsense it is. It's all, I think, to give you the semblance that there's firm earth. Well, have a real relationship with a person that goes on for years. That's completely unpredictable. And you've cut off all your ties to the land and you're sailing into the unknown, into uncharted seas. I mean, you know, people hold on to these images of father, mother, husband, wife, again, for the same reason, because they seem to provide some firm ground. But there's no wife there. What does that mean, a wife, a husband, a son? A baby holds your hands, and then suddenly there's this huge man lifting you off the ground, and then he's gone. Where's that son? All the other customers seem to have left hours ago. We got the bill, and Andre paid for our dinner. buying a suit with my father. There, I was having an ice cream soda after school. When I finally came in, Debbie was home from work, and I told her everything about my dinner with Andre. Andre. 